All but right. First, go ahead. But first, before I get into my questions, yeah, I wanted to thank you publicly. I've thanked you personally, but I wanted to thank you publicly because you inspired me and pushed me to get out and jump into the pool. I did not want to share what okay. I wanted to, what, what I was doing with music. Okay. And you encouraged me to do that. And I was surprised. I mean, when I go back and listen to it, my ear has improved. So when I go back and listen to it, I'm like, oh, okay. Okay. But, <laughs> yeah. But things improved over time. Good. And I was able to see that. So I just wanted to say thank you for that. Well, you're very welcome. I'm glad that that brings some positive musical contributions to you. That's what it's all about. Thank you. Thank you for letting me know that. That helps encourage me to keep doing this. It really does. Yeah, please Absolutely. do, please do. We we need it. Okay. So yes. the first question is about songwriting. Because okay. that is that is my favorite thing. Okay. So first, of course, the question that everybody has about whatever they're asking is what is your process? Okay. My process for songwriting starts I usually grab an instrumental, I'll make a track. And mm -hmm. then um uh, from the track I kinda do this mumbling thing. Uh the melody typically the melody will start coming in first and so i kind of just hum along to the track and um as i do that the idea what the melody should be for the song between verses and hooks comes from that mm -hmm. and then the words come now now here's my long-winded process my process is the beat's done i'll put the beat on a recording program and then go into the booth and record mm -hmm. mumbles and make it up on the spot mm -hmm. i let i leave all the bad notes in I let all of the, uh, if I'm off key, if I'm sharp or flat, I leave all that in. I do a mm -hmm. phrase, I mess up, I cough, I whatever. It all stays in the track. And then I, I render that into a track and take that and listen to that while I go to work or while I'm in traffic. Mm -hmm. And I'll listen to that for a while. <laughs> and then wow, as that happens, mm -hmm. the idea of what I want to say kicks in on that process. Because mm -hmm. oftentimes, you get different ideas of what you want to say uh, by seeing a different environment from me from where you see regularly. Like, I see this here, and so in this environment, I get mm -hmm. certain types of ideas. But if I'm out on a highway or if I'm at a location or if I'm out on the scene, and I hear, like, say if I'm driving to, like, an event or something, mm -hmm. and I hear that beat, and I, and I hear that mumble, oh, okay, and I see some, oh, they out there getting, you know, partying, something like that. Mm -hmm. So that's what my songwriting process is, but... I think that's that so to give you a short answer i usually start with music first now there are other times because i never like to stay in one format there are other times where the melody and song comes first before there's no beat or i'll sing it out in the middle of, of uh, mm, the yes. shopping market you know what i'm mm -hmm. saying grocery store mm -hmm. or something like that and i'll start there try to get a record on my phone or hum it till i get home then now, I, let me ask you something real quick are yeah. those some of your best ones because I find sometimes those seem to be like, I mean, I guess if the beat is hot, the beat is hot. Yeah. But sometimes if you if you have a melody that just comes to you and you you're like I gotta get it down, those seem to sometimes be the best ones. I don't know if that feels the same to you. I think it does. I think the most fun thing is where that insignificant idea that starts in your head out of the studio mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. sticks with you till you come back to you can make something with it, and then it turns into a whole song. And, and sometimes those those do end up being some of the best songs. They really do absolutely yeah yeah but yeah i always i try to preach there's always more than one way mm -hmm. um it's good to have a formula for that but i think that if you're if you're able to just put i think the number one thing to do is just put what you want to just start recording with what you got everybody has a studio in their pocket just start recording it and you're going to mm -hmm. accidentally find something you like i'm That's glad that you mentioned that because <sighs> I've heard of people using a similar process, the humming process, uh -huh. but I haven't used it, but I, it makes sound logic that it would work because you start to fit, like you, you're getting the cadence right and then you fit the words in the pocket. Right. So yeah, I, I, I think I'm gonna go with that. So that's that's good. Yeah. Um. So second, Okay. Which which of your songs are you most connected to and why that you've written? Okay, which song of mine I'm, I'm most connected to? And, and you, you don't have to choose one if you don't want to, because I know it's probably hard. I know, I know. Um, let's see. Uh, 
which song of mine that I'm most connected to right now? I'll say uh, gratitude. Mm-hmm. Um, but that's not that's not an all time. You want you ask which one is the most, right? Yeah, I mean, but that's that's good to know. I mean, gratitude makes sense because the words, the lyrics of that song are so powerful um, and yeah. inspirational. That that makes sense. Yeah. Um, but it's almost. Uh, I think that probably the really the recent EP Wind Chill is probably the song I'm most connected with. Mm-hmm. Um, it's either Somebody to Love or uh, Wind Chill. Like mm-hmm. it's so easy for me to go back there when I'm mm-hmm. thinking and not doing anything, and it's easy for me to go back there and remember the lessons I learned from the experiences. Mm-hmm. And um, I think I connect with them the most because it helps me sort of because it helps me keep my thoughts resolved on that situation. Sometimes you can have an imperfect situation in your life mm-hmm. and and sometimes you think about it in a loop. And then the, what the songs do, the songs provide a resolve for that. Like I settled it this way. Mm-hmm. Like a remember, yeah, remember mm-hmm. you settled it this way. It's mm-hmm. the case closed. Cause sometimes things we care about come up in our in our minds and mm-hmm. and we forget that we had a solution for that. So I think so yeah if i were to pick pick a song most right now i want to say um i'm gonna say gratitude and the reason that sticks with me the most is because i need to remember to have gratitude because it's very easy for me to i think it's very easy for anyone but even for me to take for granted the good stuff going on because Mm -hmm. i'm focused on other things i haven't achieved yet like a major a second major placement or you know really feeling like i'm on a path to something you know mm-hmm. so in the meantime while i'm in the middle of this process of advancing my career i i want to make sure that i'm happy in the process because it's very easy not to be right and you probably bring that energy to you like whatever energy if you're you don't have for gratitude or you don't practice gratitude you probably bring that negative energy to you so that's that's not helpful yeah 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 and, and it's, it, it's easy for me to use it it's easy for me to use it uh just hurt negative energy all that stuff is easy for me to mm-hmm. use that and turn that into stuff and i can i can i can go further on that but sometimes it's like all right yo like if you really stop and think like yo there's some good cool stuff going on you know it's like what i talked about a couple of videos ago how it's easier to focus on the haters and 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 you can make a mistake of forgetting about people who support you because you got mm-hmm. one hater in a comment or somewhere on instagram making all this noise when you got quite more you know surrounding support that's always going to be there yeah so. yeah and it's always i mean to go back to wind chill it's like we sometimes forget just to relate the song uh the the process of trying to uh i guess win people over for your career yeah. we forget that you know just because you meet somebody and you don't connect with them or you you know that person is not for you they just they just you're not for they're not for you you know you're not compatible yeah um and it's okay like you don't have to be angry with them you don't have to hate them you don't have to take it and internalize it it's just you're not compatible right and i think like you said if you focus on the people who you're not compatible with you'll you'll forget the other people that you could be engaging with and and going forward with and growing with absolutely Yes. So with that being said, if you could hire five staff persons to do any task for you in your music journey to help you move forward in your career, what five staff would you hire and why? Okay. Five. Uh, first person I would hire is a camera person. Mm-hmm. I would hire a camera person to follow me during my outings, gigs, and things that I do to try to do to help mm-hmm. me document what's going on so I can turn it into content for the channel. So the first person I would hire is a camera person for that content. That person mm-hmm. can shoot the video videos for me. Uh, and so that's the reason why I would do that. Because someone to hold the, the camera I need where it needs to be at and shoot in a smart way. So that would be mm-hmm. the first person I hire. Uh, the second person I would hire is an archivist or somebody that can archive all my old works and get them digitized, Mm -hmm. get them off of the CDs, get them off of old tape cassettes so Mm -hmm. that I can preserve (laughs) what I've done in the past and have it Mm -hmm. in a place that's easily uh, archivable. So that's the second one. Um, The third one, I would probably hire, I would hire a a co-host 
the reason I will hire a co-host is to kind of have things to do to bounce ideas off of. I think mm-hmm. it's uh, easier for people to 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 create content um, um, between between the two of them because there's a conversation going on, mm-hmm. right? Uh, let's see, the fourth person I would hire. Um, I would hire a guitarist. The reason I would hire a guitarist is because I I feel like sometimes that's a missing element in my music and it's harder for me to get something realistic sounding like that. Um, so I would like to hire a guitarist for that. Um, and I think the fourth person I would hire is a manager uh, that has the connections to kind of help with the music industry connects and getting stuff out there, you know, which they charge between 10 and 20%. So those are the probably. Oh, that was well, how many was that? Four. That was five. That was five. Actually. That was yes. five. Okay. Yes. So those are my answers right right there for that one off the off the rip. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And what is something that you would tell Baby Dilio if you could? Well, I would tell Baby Dilio, uh, don't do sound at churches. <laughs> don't do sound at churches. I should have known that that was going to be. Answer. Yeah. I should have known that. How old is Baby Dilio? Because there's a lot of lessons I could go by year by year. Baby Dilio is like, from what I saw, Baby Dilio was like 18, 19-ish, 20-ish. Okay. In that range. Okay. Uh, I would tell Baby Dilio to get an MPC. <laughs> I would tell him to... Uh, you know what I would teach Baby Dilio? What? Is, is to learn how to... Uh, learn how to uh save and find ways to make his own money um so that he can get the tools and equipment that he wants to get um i would tell baby dilio to save up to go to full sale instead of taking a loan out for the education i would tell david dilio to attend church but don't don't become a sound engineer at the churches if you want to be a sound engineer stick with the students don't do it at church because um, it's it, it, it'll lead, it, it's a rough life. I would say, Dilio, yes, go to full sale, but don't do it in a way that causes you to go into debt because mm-hmm. it's not a traditional job like, say, an engineering degree where you follow this program and then you get placed in the company and then you're at this nice paying job where you can instantaneously start paying back on that school loan. Mm-hmm. Uh, so those are some things I would advise there. Um, save up your money and try to live in LA for a while um, I would tell him that but but definitely I think the number one things I would tell Baby Dilio is to learn how to leverage his skills to uh, stack his money up to make more moves that suits him um, instead of relying on his parents because Baby Dilio for lack of a better word Baby Dilio did things that kind of pleased the parents because he was doing what he was supposed to do mm. but he still had a dream too as well and there wasn't really someone the other had family and had a cousin they you know that that did stuff but there wasn't like that that real mentor that really take him through as far as the r&b and hip-hop music industry is concerned yeah because yeah. he does more um he does like scoring and stuff right yeah Your cousin? yeah okay yeah and that's not that's not not that's not knocking against him but he wasn't he wasn't uh an npc user he was a piano mm-hmm. player jazz classical mm-hmm. so he wasn't sampling hip-hop beats so while i did get exposed to new age music and a lot of various forms of music mm-hmm. there are certain things that i wish i could have been exposed to uh that i wasn't so i think those are some life lessons i would i would i would go back and tell delio but definitely i would tell delio that was like early 2000 to get an npc no, I would teach him learn how to save up to get the equipment you really want. You, you know? have so much equipment. <laughs> I mean, I'm looking behind you, and I'm just right. like me with my free, my free uh, fruity loops. <laughs> right. You know, and and I'm and like, so this is this is uh this is results of uh, years of work, and mm-hmm. some of the stuff was not purchased. Yeah, no, you showed your setup. You showed the setup. I think you had cornrows or something. 
Yeah. And there was like a little like a little computer desk and maybe a yeah a PC or something. And uh-huh. I think yeah. that was about it. Yeah. The funny thing was with that PC, that PC was bought with uh, the money that was uh, given to me from my open house uh, mm-hmm. from graduating high school. Hmm. And so before I really knew how to leverage money, I was like, okay, I'm going to get a computer and I'm going to get free loops and I'm going to go to Guitar Center and buy some equipment, you know, and mm-hmm. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't know. I didn't know that if I stayed up a little more, I could have got a, a, a new NPC, but I wasn't thinking about my NPC. I was thinking uh, free loops and while free loops was a powerful program, it didn't do the same thing an NPC would at that time. NPCs and keyboards were still a more powerful, better sounding thing at mm-hmm. that time and more durable and less likely to lose your data mm-hmm. with that format back then mm-hmm. right so I, I would i would i would i would you know i would i would teach baby dealio um in a, in a world where you have loving parents that are doing everything they're supposed to do to take care of you but they may not have the tools to assist you in your music career mm-hmm. learn how to leverage your day job or learn how to leverage things to finance what you want to do you know that's 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 a key thing but yeah all this here mm-hmm. it, it, I, it's a lot that i've been through to get to this point and the only reason why you don't see more is because i'm trying to act with discipline mm-hmm. and that discipline is i want to create music with what i have and finish songs with what i have right instead of keep buying stuff and buying yeah stuff. and getting high off of that oh i have something new right Mm -hmm. so yeah that's a story there yeah okay so the last question is why are your background vocals so damn fire like why (laughs) what what is your sauce what what do you do okay i mean i feel like you just have a good grasp on the sound like the sound that you want and and the notes that are required for it but if you have any any tips i know you touched on it in another video but yeah so let's I talk, more. we'll talk yeah we'll talk about my background so my background vocals are typically three-part harmony i'm gonna give you the formula this is the formula i follow mm-hmm. and then i build from there mm-hmm. three parts of the harmony mm-hmm. four vocals for one part of the harmony so that's four mm. times three. That gives you 12 vocals, okay? Mm-hmm. You have to sing them very accurate to each other mm-hmm. as far as timing and inflection. And then each of those four vocals for one part of the harmony is pan left and right. So you got two pan left, two pan right. Mm-hmm. Then you add a little bit of, then you sprinkle in a little bit of pitch correction. Mm-hmm. A little more than you would your main vocal. Right. Um, sometimes I can add a little bit of stereo chorus effect to it. Just a little bit. Don't wash it. Just a little bit. Mm -hmm. Um, and those are some of the things I do there for the background vocals. Uh, sometimes I use, uh, this processor sometimes if I want to play with it. This is called a a VoiceWorks TC Helicon. This is vintage. This is like a vintage piece of gear there. It adds Mm -hmm. chorus. It has pitch correction in it. Um, Mm -hmm. And uh, it has like kind of like these thickening effects to it, and mm-hmm. sometimes I'll, I'll I'll work with that too as well. Uh, but yeah, that's how my background vocals work. But I, I've I've really mastered the the background vocals by doing three parts harmony. Sometimes I'll go further and do four parts mm-hmm. and five parts. That's where you start getting the twelve tracks of background, <laughs> the sixteen tracks of background, right. and then you got to turn the whole thing down. Yeah, that was going to be my question to you. Um, the volume. I'm usually. When I'm doing, even if I'm doing three parts, like when I was on the app, like you only had four boxes. So right. you didn't have much to work with. Right. So if I was doing three, my confusion was which which vocal should be lower than the other. Like that's the thing that, like basically I'm not a mixing person. I'm, okay. I'm gonna work on that, but yeah, um, yeah. yeah, the mixing is, is an issue. Yeah, you can work, you can work on that. Um, with four tracks like say if i was working with four tracks and that's how i started out i was starting off with very limited like the first mm-hmm. my first recordings was between two tape recorders playing against each other you know wow you know that's <laughs> that is that's all i had in the house you know that's all i had access to little did i know there was four track audio cassette recorders that i could have got my hands off but didn't didn't know about it and mm-hmm. nobody was there to tell me you know nobody was there to tell me but as far as the vocals is concerned 
when you're working in software, you get all those background vocals on one bus, turn that all, turn that down, a little bit of high pass on those on the EQ side, which gets rid of your mud. Mm -hmm. and then a little bit of compression to kind of keep the volumes more consistent. And those are some of the things I do to really give you those nice uh, backgrounds. But accurate singing, got to be on key, accurate and very rhythmically similar to each other so that they sound good. Because if you've got too many background vocals sounding so different at the same time, it doesn't make it clean. Yes, I know that is a pet peeve of yours. I've, I've heard you say that. Yeah, yeah. I'm aware of that yeah yeah and you got to do the takes it takes a lot of takes sometimes i won't finish the song because all i've been doing for like the last 30 to 45 minutes is background vocals did you watch brandy and monica the verses uh yeah i caught parts of it yeah 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 i remember monica was like i'm like a one take and that's all and brandy was like are you kidding me i do like i can do like i think she said something like 50 like 40 or 50 takes or something it might have been more than that but she was like like Brandy was basically saying, like I'm a perfectionist, and Monica was like, "Right, I'm, I want to get in and out." So right, yeah. Um, it, it, Auto tune helps reduce the amount of takes you need to take, but you mm -hmm. still need to you still need to sing right. Um, yeah, otherwise you know. it's gonna sound like a machine. I think. Yeah, I mean I know people use that for an effect, so you can slam mm -hmm. the auto tune, make it sound robotic, which a lot of people do. Mm -hmm. um, but if you actually are trying to sing, you just add a little bit to kind of give it that professional sheen as mm -hmm. far as pitch. And uh, but, you know, back at that time, I, I think they could have been using it back time, but it might have been hardware based. But mm -hmm. but see, there was so much less to me. There was much, much less. There was much less distraction and much less junk to, the, to distract you when mm -hmm. you're recording. Nobody had their cell phone when you're at the studio. You're at the studio. You're not at the studio with your uh, Instagram on your phone. You know, you are mm -hmm. at the studio. You got you got time booked up. So you're there doing takes, 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 takes till you get it. Yeah, that seems like a lot of pressure. Like, I feel like you have a, a luxury of having your in-home studio. But I can't imagine paying the studio prices that people pay for hours. Right. And having to nail it like i mean i'm assuming that people don't even buy studio time until they feel like they've reached a certain point yeah yeah i think -wise. yeah i think i think with the experience that i have now um if i'm in a situation where i have to rent studio time mm -hmm. i would do it i would do it um because you need that privacy you need that privacy to mess up you need that privacy to be vulnerable and to be yourself mm -hmm. and so you know some people may say oh you're wasting your money no I'm, i need this space to develop the sound you know if i don't have a space where i could just walk into and go mm -hmm. i need this space to develop my sound so i can make that happen you know so and that's 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 what it that's what it takes I, you know yeah there are a lot of expenses to this but a lot of there are a lot of small mama pop suits you know where it costs a lot less to do it and you find a good person and, and work with that person and i've been that i've been that person for a very select few people because i'm very selective with who i work with Mm -hmm. but i've been that person and if i need that person then it's my job to go find a person like that to where i can say okay i want to buy some time in your studio how much you charge it all right i'll be here to use it for this block and then we'll go from there so yeah yeah i, I mean you raise an excellent point like for me it's a kind of, it's a matter of trust like i don't think that you can i mean i'm sure that there are people around here but I'm particular too, like about where I go, especially as a woman, like yeah. a single woman, like you have to be careful about where you go. Yeah. And I know you, you hear that all the time, but um, I think like you said, it's a matter of knowing that you can trust someone and um, that you can afford it too. Like, right. Right. You know, uh, as it relates to your talent level as well. Yeah. So. Yeah. And, and that is a, uh, and that's the work. <laughs> the work is, is that's like the recording is the, the more or less, later part easy part of work the the harder part is the is the part of the job where you're trying to learn people and feel them out and mm -hmm. actually have a working communicating relationship with them first before you before you even decide to work with them you know a lot of people say oh yeah, let's collab let's collab let's work right i get mm -hmm. that a lot but they don't know that i don't know them right they don't they, they got hundreds of hours of video that they see of me that gives them confidence that i can do what they need to do they, right. what and they're I like, need, it's me. It's right. me. Right. And it's like, I haven't seen, and then a lot of people reach out to me, don't have one video, they don't have anything recorded, mm -hmm. they don't have anything like that. 
and so since if you don't have that now we have to go through a process where i have to learn who you are because mm -hmm. i don't have the luxury of looking at your catalog uh and compare it to my own and, and figure we can make something happen right i remember robert yeah. glassman was like he was complaining on his ig it was a video it was meant to be funny but i right. think he was sort of serious but he's like i hate when people come into my dms and they're like i really think you should check me out i'm pretty good i think we should work together i think we should collab and he's like they they'll pester me so much that i'll go to their page and it's nothing but selfies right right <laughs> he's like if you want to work with somebody like you should have like stay ready so you don't have to get ready yeah like, you should have your stuff up yeah and I think I think anybody should have a catalog of stuff at the level that they're at. Don't wait for the perfection. Don't wait for studio recordings. Have a catalog ready to display right where you're at because you never know uh, when you, you need somebody here that could help out. Yeah. Sound advice. Oh yeah. Solid. Cool. All As right. usual. Well, yo, anything else you need uh, before we go and and the journey up? No, we have scorched the earth. Okay, cool, cool. You want to give uh, your information? Do people want to follow you? Any information you want people to know? No, I'm good. I'm I'm good. Okay, I'm okay. Good. Well, so thank you so much for coming on here thank and being you. braving the internet because I have a very a lot of very shy viewers that I know that won't do this. So thank you so much yes. for being a part of this. And uh, Gray, he should be next because he is not shy. I don't think he is shy. <laughs> uh oh, you'd have called him out on the show. I'm passing the baton to you, sir. You are not shy. <laughs> hey, you, you, you heard it from you heard it from her first. You heard it from her first. <laughs> but thanks a lot. Thanks. No I appreciate problem. it. Thank you. And uh with that, uh stay on here. Uh I just want to let everybody know on YouTube channel, make sure you like, comment, subscribe. And this is another episode of the Feedback Loop. If you want to be part of this Feedback Loop show, please make sure to hit the link in the description below and sign up. Uh, put your email there so that I can let you know when I have new slots available for this opportunity. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you later. We're out.